In the last tutorial, we went through the initial data entry for Justin on his scenario setup pages. Here we are on his planning page. It can seem a little overwhelming at first, but once you know what you're looking at, it becomes incredibly intuitive and easy to navigate. One of the biggest complaints we hear in regards to financial planning software is that if you want to make updates, it requires going to another input page and running a report to see how that change impacted the plan. On the planning page, you can make changes right here, run the scenario and see the results right away on the same page. Values on this page that are blue or purple can be clicked to either edit them or perform an action. For example, I can click on the blue menu icon in the top of a column and see additional details. Or I can click the arrow in the section header to collapse a section or expand a section. I can click the name of the header to go directly to the scenario setup page regarding that column. Under financial assets, we can see that if I hover my mouse over one of the values, I get additional account details. Justin has told us that he's going to be saving $6,000 a year into his RSP. So I can just enter that in this pop-up window, click the check mark to copy it down until his retirement. He's saving $3,000 a year to his TFSA. Again, copy that down and run the scenario to make the updates calculate. These cells have turned yellow because they indicate an override to the software. It's an indication that you made a change to the default $0 contribution that would have happened before our overrides. Let's take a look at Justin's expenses. So he had indicated he wanted to spend $48,000 a year after tax on his lifestyle in retirement. And that value pops up right here when he's 65 years old. His actual spending that year will be the nominal dollar amount, 65,558. Before retirement, these values are gray and italic. And this is indicating to us that we cannot edit them. And they're just being populated based on Justin's employment income, minus his deductions and taxes, minus his savings, and minus his debt payments. What's left over is assumed to be spent. And then in retirement, we've entered that 48,000. We could also edit it here. And if I scroll down to the bottom, we'll be able to answer the question is if he's saving enough money and if he'll have enough to spend $48,000 a year in retirement. We can see that he's actually running into a shortfall at age 92. The net cash flow shows us the shortfall each year. And the cash balance shows us a cumulative shortfall with some interest. It's like Snap has loaned him some money to keep spending that same amount every year. The final year of those projections, we can look at his estate. I just click that value in the final year to see details. He doesn't have any more financial assets. His real asset, his home has grown in value over time. He can pay off that debt with the home value. So his final estate is $1.1 million or in today's dollars, 405,000. This is where you can really add value as a planner. What recommendations could you make to Justin? What other scenarios could you create to show him some other options? Please join me in the next video where we'll discuss more about the cash flow management to see how these assets were depleted over time.